Good morning. Today we're going to focus specifically first on talking about biofuels and biodiesel and how um, scientists are making more efforts to study sources of energy as a means of becoming more green. Uh, some of you might have wondered what the fossils mean in fossil fuels, and we know that fossils are the organic remains of organisms that lived hundreds of millions of year, years ago. Specifically, though, diatoms are protists, and they're thought to be the main source of oil, uh, whereas the coal that was formed from these, uh, the coal was formed from primitive plants. Entrepreneurs are now trying to figure out um, by using liquid droplets of diatoms and algae. Uh, they can use it as a renewable source of energy. And most of you have heard of this as biofuel or biodiesels, but specifically using unicellular algae and that could be grown on a large scale. And then that oil could be harvested and processed into biodiesel. However, there are numerous hurdles that need to be overcome before the industrial production of biofuel can become a reality. And algae are just one example of protists that we're going to be looking at today. So what exactly is a protist? Uh, protists are an extremely diverse collection of mostly unicellular eukaryotes. Uh, they are classified as eukaryotes, but they're not specifically plants, animals, or fungi. They act and behave like plants, animals, and fungi though. Most are aquatic, so they're found near water um, where there's moisture, including terrestrial habitats such as damp soil or decaying land matter. They can be unicellular or multicellular, and they obtain their energy from various sources. So autotrophs, heterotrophs, parasites, or mixotrophs. And there's a couple examples below um, of specific organisms or prokaryotes and how they obtain their energy from different sources. So I would look at those and just make sure that you understand um, how that they get their energy. Looking specifically at 16.14, 16.14 talks about the SAR group, um, which represents the range of protist diversity. So SAR stands for stromatophiles, alveolates, and rosarias. Um, and these organisms uh, consist of the diatoms specifically um, so stromatophiles consist of the diatoms, um, the brown algae, and the water molds. And I'm going to go through a couple characteristics of each one of those, so you might want to make sure that you understand um, what those are. With the assignment today, you're going to be able to um, focus in on what each one of these are and their characteristics. So diatoms are unicellular algae. Uh, they're photosynthetic, so they get their energy from the sun. They have a glassy cell wall that contains silica. They, um, all protists need to be seen under the microscope, but specifically diatoms have a glass-like appearance underneath the microscope. They consist, or the body consists of two halves that fit together like a box and a lid, um, or shoe box, specifically the box and the lid. And most are found in fresh water and marine habitats. They provide a good source of energy. Brown algae, some of you are more familiar with because you can see um, them, you can actually touch them. Uh, they're large, complex stromatophiles. They're multicellular. Uh, most are marine, and these are what we call the seaweeds. Uh, they're large bodies of, that lack specifically roots, stems, and leaves. So they're plants in the ocean, but they don't have the defining structures of terrestrial plants. Uh, most of you have seen kelp before or have heard of kelp. Um, but we have specifically, um, your book mentions that kelp can grow to be taller than a 15-story building. And our last one would be water molds. Uh, these are heterotrophic. Um, they obtain their energy from another source. They're unicellular. They decompose or break down dead plants and animals in freshwater habitats. And one specific species of water mold was responsible for causing the great potato, potato famine in Ireland in the mid 1800s. Our next group that we're going to talk about um, will be the alveolates, and these consist of the dinoflagellates and the ciliates. 
Some characteristics you want to be familiar with for dianoflagellates would be that they are unicellular, they can be autotrophs, heterotrophs, or mixotrophs. They're found both in the marine and freshwater um, plankton, and they're um, considered usually grow in balloons, uh, which are like large amounts of organisms grown at once. They can be responsible for causing a phenomenon known as the red tide. Our next example would be the ciliates. They're named for the cilia that move and sweep food from their, or sweep food into their mouths. Unicellular organisms, both heterotrophs and mixotrophs. And examples of these organisms would be paramecium and plasmodium. Uh, plasmodium are responsible for causing a disease called malaria. Um, which I thought was interesting. And then our last group that we're going to talk specifically about the SAR um, group would be your Rosaria, um, which consists of amoebas, formins, and then radial varin. Uh, amoebas are organisms that feed specifically using pseudopodia, which are foot-like or arm-like extensions that extend from the body. They grab the food and then pull it back into the organism's mouth. Um, if you ever get the opportunity to see what they look like underneath um, the microscope when they do this, it's pretty cool. I might post um, a video of an amoeba feeding using a pseudopodia so that you can see that tomorrow. Uh, looking at formins, we have um, formins are found mainly in the ocean and freshwater. They have a porous shell called a test, which is made up of calcium carbonate. 90% of these organisms are fossilized. And then radiolarins also have a hard internal skeleton made up of silica. And mostly these organisms are marine, are found in marine habitat. Our next section we're going to talk about is unicons. Um, and these are protists that are closely related to fungi and animals. Um, these are amoebozoans. And mainly with the amoebozoans, they could be free living, they could be parasite amoebas, and they can also be the slime molds, um, which most of you have, are familiar with the slime molds, I believe. Um, but slime molds, either plasmodial slime molds or cellular slime molds, are common in moist, decaying organic matter. So they're mainly found in the forests um, and they're brightly pigmented. Your book shows an example of one being bright yellow. Uh, these are the ones that are found usually in the woods um, growing and covering large amounts of a tree. So those are the important parts uh, for, the, for that section specifically. Our last section that we're going to talk about would be the archaea plastids, um, which includes red algae and green algae and then land plants. These are autotrophic eukaryotes, and they're thought to have arisen by the theory of endosymbiosis, um, specifically of cyanobacterium that evolved into chloroplasts. Their descendants evolved into red algae um, and green algae, which are the key photosynthesizers in aquatic uh, foods. Red algae uh, gets its um, red color from an accessory pigment that actually masks the green pigment. A few of these are unicellular, but mainly they're multicellular. These are common in coral reefs. They're commercially important because they're found in some foods. Uh, specifically, red algae is used as a gel stabilizer found in ice cream or chocolate or milk or specifically pudding. They're also used um, to wrap sushi, and that's known as nori. And then our green algae uh, gets its green color from the chloroplast or chlorophyll. Uh, they're unicellular, and these are colonial species, um, which are usually groups of organisms. And examples of that would be the volvox and the um, alba, or sea lettuce. Okay. And that is what we are going to cover in relation to protist. Um, so I hope that you uh, got some information from that lecture. Uh, if you have any questions or uh, need to uh, need clarification on something, please feel free to send me a comment and I will get back to you. 
but I hope that you have a good day. And with the next one, I will be explaining what we're going to be doing today.